Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I'm going to talk about the hydration of alkynes, which is addition of water to alkyne molecules. This reaction is typically done in the presence of the Bronsted acid as a catalyst or in the presence of the catalytic mercury plus two ions, which allows for significantly milder conditions than the pure acid. Both reactions, regardless of conditions, lead to the formation of the enol intermediate, which then undergoes the ketoenol tautomerization and forms the final product, a ketone. Both reactions have a very interesting mechanism, so without any further ado, grab your cup of coffee and notebook to work through the examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started! We are going to look at the acid catalyzed mechanism first. As the example compound for this mechanism, we'll take propyne. And since we're dealing with the hydration and acidic conditions, our acid is going to be the sulfuric acid. The first step is going to be the electrophilic attack on the alkyne. Just like in the case of the hydrohalogenation of alkynes, this is not quite the true mechanism, but this is the way it is taught in the majority of the textbooks, so I'll go with this version of you know, regardless how much I might hate this version of this mechanism. So going back to my mechanism, this electrophilic attack can give us either the primary carbocation, like this, or the secondary carbocation. Naturally, we'll discard the mere idea of the primary carbocation, because it is just science fiction, and proceed with the secondary one. The next step is going to be the nucleophilic attack, and the nucleophile in this case is naturally going to be water. This gives me the protonated intermediate like this, which we will promptly deprotonate with either another equivalent of water or the conjugate base of the sulfuric acid uh, that we used at the very beginning of this reaction, yielding me the enol product. And what I want to mention here is that the enol intermediate is rather unstable and will not be the final product. As I've mentioned at the very beginning, this reaction undergoes a ketoenol tautomerization to give a ketone as the final product. Which brings me to the question, what exactly is the ketoenol tautomerization? A ketone functional group is the one where I have the carbonyl, CO double bond, connected to two alkyl groups, while the Enol is a complex functional group in which the OH is sitting on one of the carbons of the double bond. And the term tautomerization is just a fancy way of telling us that these two functional groups are at the equilibrium with each other. This equilibrium typically favors the ketone side, that's why an enol is rarely going to be the final product in these types of reactions. This also means that our enol that we made in this reaction gotta become a ketone somehow. So how exactly does that happen? Well, let's look at that. We'll start by taking our enol from the previous step and reacting it with the acid uh, that we have floating around. Importantly here is that the double bond that's going to get protonated here and not the oxygen, giving me the intermediate that looks like this. And I know it's a lot to take in right away, so let's look at this mechanism step by step and look at where all the electrons end up. The electrons of the pi bond that I have over here, that were used to grab the proton, these electrons are now here between the carbon atom and the hydrogen. Next, this electron pair on the oxygen ended up as a pi bond between the oxygen atom and the carbon. And finally, these electrons between the hydrogen and oxygen of the sulfuric acid are now here on the oxygen of the sulfate anion, which is of course going to be our conjugate base in this case. So now we can either use water or sulfate anion to deprotonate our intermediate and get the final product, acetone in this particular case. So essentially, we end up flipping the position of the double bond and the hydrogen in this case. I'm not going to claim that I'm the best animator out there, I'm by far not, but here is a little animation that I've made to make this process a little easier to visualize uh, how to predict the product without having to go through the entire mechanism every single time. So to recap, 
we start with an alkyne, we protonate it, making a secondary carbocation, which then is attacked by water, making a protonated intermediate, which we then deprotonate, making an enolate. Now, since the enolate is not a stable molecule and can't be the final product, we now are going to go through the ketoenol totomerism. We start by reprotonating our molecule at the double bond. This gives us another protonated intermediate like this, which we are going to deprotonate again with another equivalent of water or conjugate base. This gives us the final product, heptane to own. So as a shortcut for these reactions, you can skip the mechanism of the first part leading to the enol by remembering that this reaction gives us the Markovnikov's product. I'll take my starting material and I will number my carbons to make sure I don't lose anything. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like that. Then I'm going to draw a seven carbon chain and a double bond between carbons one and two. Then I will place the OH group at the carbon number two. This gives me my enol intermediate. Then I'll redraw my enol, erase the hydrogen on the OH group and the double bond like this, and then add the double bond between carbon and oxygen making my final product, which is going to be a ketone in this case. Now, remember that I'm using the bond line structures here, which means that the hydrogens on my carbons are implicit. They are still there in the actual molecule. So if you're going to be drawing the Lewis structures, make sure you're not just erasing atoms and forgetting about them completely. So important thing here to remember that you add your OH to the most substituted carbon of the alkyne and the hydrogen to the less substituted carbon of the alkyne, although here it is implicit, so I'm not showing that. Then we are going to be converting the CO double bond to make the final product while erasing the CC double bond at the same time. Simple dimple. Now the mercury catalyzed mechanism is a bit more complicated. Naturally, we're going to start with an alkyne. The next step is going to be the electrophilic attack by mercury. Depending on the textbook, this step can be depicted with just mercury plus two ion or mercury acetate or mercury sulfate, mercury oxide, and about a million of other things. So for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to just show the mercury ion here. This electrophilic attack makes a mercuric ion or sometimes it is also referred to as mercurinium ion. This step is very similar to the oxymercuration of alkenes. Remember that reaction? If not, make sure you review it, because if you are talking about alkynes in your class, you have certainly seen the alkenes by now and that reaction for the alkenes as well. So then, just like with the alkenes, we are going to open this ion from the more substituted side, making a protonated intermediate like this which then goes through a series of convoluted mechanistic steps that turns our molecule into an enol. In my experience, pretty much nobody ever asks students for this part of the mechanism. So this part kind of makes a big black box, but as always, check with your instructor if you're responsible for it. Or you can just skip that part and get to your enol product right away. Now, when it comes to the next step, the key to enol totemerization step, this one is more than a fair game. We already know the mechanism for that one, so you gotta be able to do that one for sure. And for some extra practice, draw the mechanism for this transformation that I have on the screen and see if you can get the same final product that I have here. You should have two steps there, starting with the protonation of the double bond and followed by the deprotonation of the intermediate yielding a ketone. So what do you guys think about the hydration of alkynes? Do you like these mechanisms? Do you hate them? Let me know in the comments below. And if you learned something new today, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe so you don't miss any updates. Oh, and by the way, I do post every single day. Thank you for watching till the very end, check out this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.